Hey, welcome back to Answers About Alzheimer's. Um, as always, I'm so excited to see you. Today, we're going to talk about a topic concerning whether or not you might want to introduce a baby doll or a stuffed animal to your person with dementia. I'm going to apologize because my cat is playing very noisily with my kitten over there. So I apologize if there's a little background noise, but um, so it's important. This is an important topic. And I feel like there seems to sometimes be some controversy when you talk about whether or not you should introduce um, a stuffed animal or a baby doll to a person with dementia. And I get it that there could be some people who believe that this um, reduces dignity by giving them a doll or a toy, but we're not introducing it in that way, right? So, you know, I, I get really, really passionate about these types of subjects and I am the first one to advocate for a person with dementia about being treated with dignity and respect and being treated like an adult and not a child. But there's a difference between treating someone like a baby when they're an adult and there's something to be said for actual therapy and something that is beneficial to the person with dementia. So the whole point of caring for someone with dementia is to relieve their burden of suffering. I've said that a million times. It probably should be in my new catchphrase. The whole purpose of caring for a person with dementia is to relieve their burden of suffering. So if you're gonna hand them a stuffed animal or a doll and it's gonna bring them joy and comfort and reduce behaviors, anxiety and fear, then why not brilliant okay so I'm not going to even go into the cons of this because if it's not working you just don't do it right it's pretty simple some of this stuff is pretty cut and dry right you try it doesn't work okay that doesn't work you move on you try something else um but in most cases this does work so I think it's something people should consider. I saw a post from a caregiver and I I don't think it was on one of my uh, channels. I think it was on a different channel that I was looking at, but the person was concerned and conflicted. It was recommended to her to give this a try and she was like, I don't know if I should try it. Okay, why not? Like. If you try it and it doesn't work, I mean, what are you out, like 20 bucks for a doll? I mean, obviously there are a lot of different price ranges, but seriously, um, if something doesn't work, it just doesn't work. But there's no reason not to try something, right? Because if it's going to end up benefiting them, then that's what we need to do. We just need to step up and try things. That's what a dementia dare giver does, right? That's why I have dementia dare givers because we dare to try new things. We dare to um, implement new techniques and we work on ourselves to make us be able to relieve that burden for that person even more. And that's a skill. And that's a skill that takes learning to do. So my name is Deborah Costu. If you're new, I welcome you to hit the subscribe button, join our family. Um, those of you who are returning, you know how I am. I'm, I'm not gonna pussyfoot around, right? I'm gonna tell you like it is. And if you don't like it, that's okay. You don't have to like everything I say. Um, but I'm here to share my knowledge with you and you could do with it what you want. And this is just the beginning of your journey with me. If you continue with me, you will know that these types of videos can only get you so far. There's more education that needs to be done, but I'll, I'll kind of mention that in a few minutes. But today, you know, we're going to talk about the importance of introducing um, 
a therapy doll or a stuffed animal. And listen, you can go online and you can buy top of the line therapeutic. You know, they're weighted and they look very real and whatever. Uh, but if you can't afford that, you don't need to go to those extremes. You can try just a regular baby doll. Maybe you have one from your own childhood that you can pass on or um, pick up something at a thrift store. Just make sure it's clean. That's kind of my thing. I kind of worry about cleanliness. But, um, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be a therapy doll. Um, there are some things you do want to make sure, though, Um and I guess I'll jump right into that. But you want to make sure if you're picking a doll that you want to make sure that the eyes don't close and open. And the reason for that is because if the eyes are closed, the person with dementia may think that the baby is dead. And that's something we definitely don't want, right? Because we're here to relieve the burden of suffering, not create more issues for them to be concerned or worried. And we know that people with dementia, they are concerned and they do worry. So um, so don't get a baby doll that, that the eyes open and close. Um, but like, for instance, now this one, the eyes do open and close. But this is a doll. And I wouldn't necessarily recommend a doll like this. I would recommend more of like a baby, baby doll um, that they can swaddle and wrap and, and rock. This doll looks like she's a little bit older. Um, but, but really anything to hold. I have some other examples that I'm going to bring out in a minute, but you may not realize this, but most people with Alzheimer's or dementia, they are afraid. They are living in fear constantly because they don't know who they are. They don't know where they are. They're in unfamiliar surroundings. That is very frightening. They don't, people are strangers to them. People are barking orders at them all day. There's noise going on. So people with dementia are, in most cases, afraid. They also feel like they should be doing something. You know, all our lives we've had a purpose. We work, we go to school, we take care of the house, we cook, we clean. You know, we run errands. We've always got a list, right? We've always got an agenda. And now all of a sudden, we're kind of like, huh, I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to be doing, everybody's doing something to run. I don't know what I'm supposed to, what am I supposed to, I don't know what I, no, 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 no. it's scary. So you give them a little stuffed animal and say, hey, could you take care of um, Ellie for me? Could you just take care of Ellie for me for a couple hours or... You know, the neighbor had to go to the store. Could you hang on to and see what happens? If they if they take to a stuffed animal or to a doll, then let it be. If they don't, that's okay too. And you don't call it a stuffed animal. You give it a name, right? Ellie, whatever. And if they change the name, just go with that, right? So you never want to call a doll a doll, right? It's a baby um, or it's Ellie right? So when, when people, normally most people, and these are people, let me just say too, that these are in the progression of the disease. When you're going to introduce something like this would be either towards the later middle stages or the late stages of dementia. And if they're maybe having behaviors, aggression, anxiety, this would be a great time to introduce something like this. Now, they even have mechanical animals that you can get that actually move and they make noise. Just make sure the noises don't sound like crying. No crying in the baby dolls either because that's stressful, right? We want to relieve the stress. We want to introduce joy, relaxation, and comfort. So when you think about someone who is afraid or anxious or upset, we want to bring them comfort, right? We want to relieve the burden. So if they have even just something to hold or hang on to, oftentimes that can help them with their feelings of anxiety and stress. So, and we we talk about that in bathing as well. And I, oh, I just put up a brand new bathing video for you guys in the compact courses. 
So if you're interested in that, that's on the website. There's a link below to the website. But um, there's several compact courses. I think there's four or five now um, that are available for you to help you with getting some quick results with your person with dementia. And bathing is the newest one. So check that out. Okay, so... Um, the whole purpose of a baby doll or a stuffed animal for a person with dementia is to provide feelings of comfort, uh, feelings of safety, and feelings of purpose. And it's about quality of life, right? This is about quality of life. And um, so it's to provide, uh, it will help them self-soothe as well. And it's been proven that these therapy animals and therapy baby dolls, they will respond and feel more connected. They feel like they have a purpose. They have a reason. Um, if the person asks you if the doll is real, you could say something like, well, do you want it to be real? Or what is her name? Right? So don't say, no, it's not real. And I mean, you, you could say it's real, but would you, would you like it to be? Do you think it is? What do you think? What do you think? So when we feel good, when we have a purpose, what it does is it's been proven that these therapy animals and baby dolls will actually reduce anxiety and agitation. Um, it increases people with dementia's happiness levels. I mean, come on, if it increases their happiness levels, um, it also will increase their activity level. So oftentimes they're more engaged. They um, actually, it's been proven that they socialize more with other residents and other people around them, which is amazing because we know that as this disease progresses, there's less and less socialization, which is the opposite of what we want to do. Um, they have fewer and fewer negative verbal aggressions. Um, it improves their mood. It also decreases wandering. And a lot of patients in these latter stages, they have wandering issues. Um, and it can also, believe it or not, improve their eating and their diet and their hunger. So they will actually be eating more. So if a person with dementia responds positively to you introducing a therapy animal or baby doll to them, then great. If they don't, if they don't like it, if it upsets them, if they think something is wrong with the doll or their, um, it, it's just not going well, then you need to remove it, make an excuse like, oh yeah, you know, her mom came back from the store and so she's all set. Thank you so much for helping out. We really, we really appreciate your helping her out. That was so nice of you to do that. Um, and then you can just remove it. Um, so we want to make sure that again, you know, we're, we're relieving the burden of suffering for the person with dementia. And a study of 51 nursing homes who introduced this baby doll therapy, um, they found that it significantly decreased negative verbalizations, wandering, aggression, and obsessive behaviors because it gave them something to do and something to focus on other than their other obsessive behaviors. So give it a try right? I mean, what have you got to lose? And again, it's all about reducing the burden of suffering for the person with dementia. And it's also been shown to relieve some of the pressure off of the caregivers as well. So I hope that you found that interesting. And on, I think the last one or two videos, I did mention that our YouTube one year anniversary is coming up in October. And I'm trying to hit some new goals, so please subscribe. But I wanted to know if you would be interested in joining me in a Zoom event to celebrate the one year and just maybe come together and talk about 
our people with dementia, we can maybe go around and everybody can talk about their person with dementia and who they're caring for um, or their past experiences or maybe even people have passed on that were important to them and uh, maybe do a little Q&A. And I just thought it might be a little good time. So if you're interested in that, type in the chat, um, Zoom event or one year anniversary, you're interested so that I know you might be interested. And uh, also too, on another video, I asked you guys to tell me where you're viewing from. And that was fantastic. I'd love to hear from more of you. I've got East Australia, West Australia, um, uh, South Africa, Jamaica, um, uh, UK, lots from the UK. Tell me where in the UK. There's lots of different parts of the UK. Uh, Finland, um, gosh, Philippines. Uh, there's been so many. So please let me know where you're where you're viewing from. I love that. I think eventually I'm going to get a big map, map and I'm going to start sticking pins in there. Um, so the compact courses, I kind of mentioned those earlier. The link is down below, answers about ALZ.org. Um, I have two books out now. One is available on Amazon, Forget Me Not, hugely, wildly popular, amazing book, fantastic resource for you. The other one is um, my, uh, it's online, and that's at the website, and that's called <laughs> the Dementia Starter Kit. It's called the Dementia Starter Kit. Um, but you know what? You got to be smarter than dementia, right? If you're going to be a caregiver, you have to be smarter than dementia. And sometimes that's not easy to do. I mean, it took me 15 years to get where I am. And I did this full time. And I, I don't mean full time. I mean 24-7 for 15 years because I owned a home care business and I took care of my mom. So, and I taught for the Alzheimer's Association. So all that together, 24-7, I learned about dementia. So that's why I want to pass all this great information on to you. But in order to really, really, really be the best caregiver that you can be and do it much more easily, um, you got to take some courses. I mean, that's really the only way to do it. So if you're a true dementia caregiver, which I hope you are, I hope to see you in some trainings. Um, I'd love to meet you personally and walk you through the program. So book a call and I can talk to you about the program that we offer, the Certified Master Dementia Strategist course. Oh my God, I love this course. I just love it. So I'm now out teaching care communities. Boy, oh boy, do they need this training. So I'm out there teaching care communities now um, and it's it's so exciting. So let's get the world trained in dementia. So I'm Deborah Costu, your host. Come again, subscribe, tell your friends, and let me know if you're interested in that event in October to celebrate our one year anniversary. I love you guys. I'll see you next time. Together we can.